Greetings, uh, an addendum. Um, well, we were, uh, Zef Daniel here, the Zef Report. I'm sorry, I was a bit angry in the last uh, audio and let a couple F-bombs and S-bombs fly. If that offends you, my apologies. Um, as Trish says, sometimes those words are appropriate, and it's not different from the way I speak uh, at home. Um, I should probably have better control over my tongue. Uh, I do in some cases, and in some cases I don't, you know. In some cases I'm kind of uh, a bit loose there. And that's something that, you know, I, I wanted to work on. It's funny, now that I want to work on it, it's happening more often. So it's so bizarre. If I just didn't even pay attention to it, it would probably take care of itself. Anyway, folks, we're in the top ten, this time number three in society and culture I, I chose a more competitive category, society and culture, which is kind of like, um, you know, a, uh, a pod bean. You have several uh, categories. I chose society and culture because I didn't want to choose religion for the Zeph report. And um, it's more competitive, and you, you can see that, but it, it, we're in a block. We're number three in the block. They don't have it listed one, two, three, but we're number three. Last year, we were number seven. Now we're number three in that block. Thank you very much. There's two ahead of us. Uh, but that's non-religious. That's uh, some syndicated shows and whatnot there. So they were in pretty darn good company to have that, uh, that rating. And we're in, the top, uh, we're in the top three or four for popular podcasts on Podbean. We're, the, we're in the top ten for all the podcasts, all the co categories in terms of popular podcasts today. I don't know if it'll be there tomorrow, but we're there today. Um, so someone's listening, and I thank you, and God bless you, and I pray in Jesus' name for, for um, you know, relief for whatever your, your, your symptoms are, for whatever the problem is. I sense um, people are ill right now, and I'm just praying for your, your quick restoration. I was sick yesterday. Terrible, terrible sort of a metabolic thing. I had uh, gone briefly from being ketogenic to um, to not ketogenic, to having uh, carbohydrates. And and, uh, and then I was doing liver detox and doing all this stuff. And, and um, it just got me to a state of just <laughs> real panicky. And then I got back into a ketogenic. That, that That's the best for me because it... Um, that with, with certain oils that I take has uh, kept me, um, I'll just say, let's say it's, if, well, you hear a lot about prostate, it's kept the prostate in good shape. Let's just put it that way. Where I'm, uh, whereas uh, the carbohydrate way, I, I am uh, almost crippled from that. So it's been a, it's just a really dramatic difference between the two, but cutting the sugar has been the thing, the, the key with me that has um, helped on, on many health fronts, and I'm very grateful for having learned that and read uh, various books on the subject, and including uh, Dr. Warburg, who um, won a Nobel Prize for curing cancer, and he got buried, but including Warburg's research, I think it's irrefutable, you know, and so, hallelujah. Now, moving on, okay, so I'm, you know, so I've kind of forgotten about the incident of you know, people trying to shame, you know, this issue of Christians shaming Christians for posting things that, you know, I know these people are not uh, Christians. I know they're not in the, um, uh, in the club. I know they're not saying praise Jesus. I know that um, the people that if I post some music from the past, I know that they're not, but I appreciate music and, and what people are doing. And so I know that they're 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 not all non Christians either. Some are, but I know that they're not that. That doesn't necessarily mean a person's bad if they're not saying Jesus. It means they have you know for whatever reason the Lord has not called them or they're not paying attention. Like me, I went what my whole life I was evil until finally one day I said okay Lord or I said yes and I was I begged or whatever. Uh, I was bad until then. I guess you could say that, but that's pretty pretty harsh because I was uh, probably a pretty good person. I was pretty much in pain, but I was not a bad person. And I would 
you know, look at Christians and, you know, and I was, and I had all kinds of artwork and things that people would say, oh, that's really evil. And now I look back on it and, and I'm like, uh, you know, that, this, 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 this thing that I was getting at today, and now we're having part two because it's very important. It's very, very dangerous, people. It's very, it, 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 it's, it's so dangerous, I can't even tell you, but it, I remember back when people took a walk through my house and wanted me to get rid of things, you know, masks from Tibet and, you know, different kinds of artwork that showed new agey subjects or whatever it was. And it was just, you know, not evil in and of itself. It would be evil if I gave it over to evil, but it, it didn't do anything to me. Just like, you know, Brother Thomas said he, was, he bought a Toys in the Attic um, record, which was the Aerosmith 1970s you know, iconic album, Dream On and all that. And um, he said he likes rock and roll. And he, that was an album that he liked. So he went and got it and downloaded it. He listens to it. I might listen to Chick Corea, Return to Forever. Chick Corea, if I posted that, uh, the, the, you know, the same people come around going, uh, you know, I'm sorry, but Chick Corea was a Scientologist and a Satanist. And Stanley Clark is a Satanist. And Flora Purim was a drug addict. And I'm like, that's one of my favorite records. Why shouldn't I listen to it? That's one of the best jazz albums. And Joe Farrell, well, who knows what Joe Farrell was? He's an alto, I love that album. An alto sax player. And, um, you know, you could make a case they were all high on cocaine when they made the album. I mean, that's the rumor has it. And, uh, you know, and, and I'm not sure where, I don't think Chick Corea had the Chick Corea Mad Hatter Studios yet. But I've been to Mad Hatter Studios, which is probably demon infested because it's Chick Corea of Scientology. And so um, I mixed a, uh, uh, that's a long story. But anyway, I was there mixing, a, you know, producing a mix of some uh, players from the LA, LA Philharmonic. And um, it didn't seem bad to me. I was there and it seemed like a pretty good, uh, nice room, nice people. I collaborate with people who are not, um, you know, necessarily Christian for whatever reason, and just like I might not be a Hindu, uh, and they're good people. If I post one of their songs or collaborate with them and they're a known Satanist, I guess, you know, because if they're, in other words, if they're not with Jesus, then they're a Satanist. Now, I may have contributed to that when I was younger, and I've tried not to, but I, I think it's kind of hard not to. You have to be careful. It's really threading the needle. And um, if I have, I apologize. And, you know, obviously I've repented because I'm, I've changed my approach. Um, but when it was done to me, it was like, oh, my God, you talk about totalitarianism. You talk about no joy. You talk about meanness. You talk about hatred. You know, that's that's what you've got here. And, um, you know, and then they come around and then they'll bring up, you know, once you once you uh, confront them, they go and get the blog and all the bad stuff of my past and then they post that there. These Christians that want to publicly shame you are not Christians in the true sense of the word. They're not following Jesus at all. They don't have the Holy Spirit at all because it's done in a mean-spirited way, in an intellectual, legalistic, Pharisaic way. Sorry to put it out, but I, what I mean by that is Pharisees versus Jesus back in the day. So enough can't be said about this. I, you know, I finally had to just ban the person from my Google thing because I just, I, I you didn't want to just have a, you know, I decided not to have a stage, uh, staged event of, of watching this person then condemn me and then going through a, a whole long, you know, thing for people to, uh, with, with these kind of people, you got to nip it in the bud. I had another one around for a couple of years and she finally manifested on YouTube, calling me all kinds of names in the book and I'm sold out to Hollywood. I'm like, and, and who's paying my check? Who, who, is, who, who is my handler in Hollywood? There is none. You know, there is none. 
And um, uh, but but they don't. But that doesn't stop them from accusing you. And these people all are going on with the Jews and the evil of the Jews, and then Saturn and Yahweh and Molech and you know, and the whole rest of it. And in my my experience, they've all been women. I'm sorry, but they've all been women, pretty much. And they go around with this broad brush condemning everything they see. They're horrible people. They must have be very frustrated sexually or something. You know what I mean? There's Maybe they're ugly. I don't know. You know what I mean? I, they're, they're mad at the world, though, I can tell you that. And they get on this Christian thing as a lever. Now, I might have done some of that when I was younger when I finally found some relief. But very quickly, I got my initiation into the NFL by seeing the way the churches treated us and you know, and how, how they just weren't satisfied with us being good people, making nice donations, making good contributions, singing, uh, uh, praying together. That wasn't good enough for them. They wanted more. You know, they wanted to get into our personal lives. They wanted us to conform to their way of life and to their thoughts. And, and, and they would not accept it. They were the meanest people uh, I've ever seen. And also the most threatening were the church, churchian people. The most threatening and with some consequences, like one, my motorcycle got, uh, uh, got sabotaged and uh, with, a, with a nail in the back tire, a little tiny, tiny thing that just was like, um, but that led to a flat, which was bizarre because it's a brand new tire, brand new bike, a flat going 70 miles an hour on the freeway, you know? <laughs> And uh, then it had to be hauled in. But that was that was related to a pastor at a church, a big mega church in L.A. Because he had his bike there and, you know, same same issue. We uh, got the Stonewall treatment because we were just being ourselves. And that wasn't good enough for these people. And then we got the sabotage treatment on top of it. So on behalf of the church, we kill you. Okay, right there. That the only time my life has been threatened or even sabotaged has been, not the only time, but I mean the time where it was kind of in my face one time, had to do with the church. And I, I'll tell you what was happening there. These Christians who told me to take down all this artwork and stuff, same one, same vibe. They... um are many of them murderers and will murder you if you're not in Satan to begin with. And then you can have Jesus. In other words, the first conformity, which makes you like the world. And then after that, you'd be whatever religion you want. Okay, that's unacceptable to Jesus Christ. That's unacceptable to our Lord. That is being spotted by the world. That is being conformed to the world and having the love of the world. That is not being separate in Christ. And, and, and people that go around shaming people are part of the same. I mean, I've seen it more with the evangelicals than I have with the Catholics, I have to admit. The Catholics seem to be a lot more cool in that regard. But, uh, you know, the world's a dangerous place. And it's dangerous because of the devil that doesn't exist because of the conformity that doesn't exist, because of the, of, the, of the rules of society that don't exist. How is a person that is an honest person, just a, a basic straight shooter, supposed to deal with the world that doesn't exist? They don't tell you what, what the rules are. They don't tell you what the thing is. So how are you supposed to know? Again, complete unfairness, and, and a, 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 a malfeasance of justice. And, you know, I think you can relate to this. Um, and then the targeting, of course, and all the rest of it and the supernatural stuff is interdimensional and bizarre and very frightening. And all of this done to a child who, who's just trying to get, you know, along. I cry foul. I say no, not in this, not not in God's world, not in God's kingdom. So when I see people who react by, um, well, what they usually do is they then say you're a, you know, you're not a Christian. They try to shame you, and if you don't obey them, Zeke, yes, ma'am, whatever you say, ma'am. 
Then they come around and say, well, you're no Christian, blah, blah, blah. You're evil. People should say, and they go on a campaign like that. I, um, these are jackals. These are not, obviously, I don't take them seriously as, as brethren because they, they've made it clear they're not brethren with me. And um, so whatever I'm brethren with, um, they're not brethren with you either. And um, they're just not in the same vibe, not in the same family, not in the same thing. So, uh, you know, it can be a little thing like like sh trying to shame you on a post that you make. But, I, it, you know, I, I um, from now on, I, I guess, when I see that, I'm going to kill it. I'm going to kill it dead that minute. And the reason is, is because I don't have time to do that. I don't have time to pussyfoot around, go back and forth on little uh, adolescent threads and um, and babysit these people that are, they just, they say they're born again six months ago and then they go around shaming people. They're using the born again, they're using the whole thing to go around shaming, hating, blaming the Jews. If they bring the Jews up and they, they do the thing on a post, they are not in Christ, period. They couldn't be. It's impossible. They don't have the spirit of the Lord. They don't have the, that, that thing that makes it, you would have discernment, but then you have the spirit of the Lord that gives you compassion for people. They basically condemn everyone that does not obey them. It really comes down to, to Jezebel wanting to be obeyed. And another stealth, you know, you can't trust them because obviously they're playing for the other side. So... In this case, this one was from my own, you know, neighborhood. But of course, isn't that perfect? Doesn't isn't that that perfect? Someone from your own area. Well, you know, they're cut, and uh, I, I'm going to do that with all of them from now on. I don't keep many people, you know, around on Google Plus. I'm always cutting them because I, I don't really. I just kind of hang out there and post stuff. I'm not looking for a fight or an argument. When I get into an argument or anything like that, it just, you know, that crosses a certain line. Not not <clears throat> a normal disagreement or this is the way I see it, this is the way you see it, that's fine. But when it gets into crossing that line and, you know, you, you know when it happens, right? Then they're gone. And I just keep that low key there. Um, same thing with Twitter, you know, I, if I make a political comment about Trump or something like that, I usually get a lot of inflamed, angry people making tweets, which I expect, uh, but I just blow that off. I don't, you know, that's because I made a, a political tweet. Yes, I make a political tweet about Trump. I mean, does that make me evil? I forget what I said. I, I said, I'm happy that he demasks people and shows how many hypocrites we have in the media, politics, you know, government. Where I'm glad he demasks Obama and the Clintons and everybody. I'm so grateful to have him selling out big stadiums. And then telling me that Ted Cruz is really ahead, which is a joke. It's because they want to run against Cruz because Cruz would be an easy... Uh, Hillary would crush Cruz without even trying to do anything. You know, it'd be, it'd be a joke. It'd be a, I won't even vote if that's what it's going to be. But they're trying desperately to, to make people think there's this cruise. I mean, the biggest liars I've seen are not is not is not Barack Obama. Barack, you're off the hook here. It's uh, the uh, the the Republican Party are the biggest lie. They get the tzz, they get the biggest liar award for so far for for last year and this year. In their reaction to Trump, they've been turned. You, you see who they really are. You see who a guy like Karl Rove really is. But anyway, in terms of... Um, one guy said to me, what's wrong with social conformity? I said, there's nothing wrong with conforming to rules and laws. It's when you give up your soul, mate. You know, that's the problem. And, you know, and, and if you think you give up your soul, then you get to run around the track and do what you want. That's not true because you're 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 missing. You, you've opened the door to demonic possession at that point. There's some very dangerous things that can happen to a person who gives in. It's better to just fight them off. I fought them my whole life, as my mother said. You know, you you you, and she felt I was really foolish and stupid to do that. But I fought them, and and you know, and it's like, yeah, and your life was ruined. Yes, my life was ruined. I mean, and if you want to compare my life to my 
classmates that went on and did something with themselves, yes, my life was ruined. Yes, I, I okay, if you like, I ruined my life. <laughs> yes, I ruined my life. And I'm so, ever so grateful that the Lord, well, I've, I fought against something. I didn't even know what it was. I just was like, you know, I didn't even know what the hell I was doing. I was just, you know, bumbling around and, you know, and I'm like, gosh, this is serious. They try to f freaking kill you. So I said freaking, not, you know, right? So this one, <laughs> look, you just have to forgive me. I am sorry. Did I want to, did I, I didn't even know what I was doing. I mean, I, when I look back on it and all the, but, but I have bona fides, okay? I'm not going to let some Johnny come lately, some know-nothing idiot shame me for something I didn't even do when it's one of those guilt trip things they want to lay on everybody to uh, exert superiority because obviously they must feel inferior. You know, they've been a Christian for a year and now, or, you know, whatever. And now they feel like they're, they're in a position to lecture everybody about the walk in Christ. <laughs> right? Yeah, well, I have skin in the game and, and I'm missing skin <laughs> that was in the game. And at least, you know, I know that I've got that. I know I've earned my, um, my freedom and I know that I've, uh, I've earned it. Oh, yeah, I fought for it, and I earned it. It wasn't just given to me by Jesus. You know what I mean? It was like, yeah, it's given to you, but, yeah, you have to fight for it, too. You know what I mean? It's not just like I can passively be having my life, and now I say zig heil to Jesus, and then, therefore, I'm cool. That's what you get. And then they come around trying to shame you for, for being an individual. The left is another thing. The left has always been, um, you know, I've always been very, I remember being shamed in, in the 1960s. Was it 61, 62 or whatever, around that election with Kennedy. I was in the first grade and John F. Kennedy won over Nixon. Do you, do you recall it? 1960? Okay. So then I was uh, six years old then, right? First grade. Yes? Okay. So there I am. I remember I was at Hawthorne School in Beverly Hills. And this is when I, got, I had to go to private school because they removed me from the school. Um, because everyone said, they, the, the teacher went around the room and said, okay, who's voted for Kennedy? And everybody, you know, so who have your parents voted for? The teachers shouldn't be doing this. But they went around, you know, everyone, Kennedy. And I will have a confession to make because I didn't want the public scrutiny I raised my head and said Kennedy, even though they voted for Nixon. I just have to admit that. I was shamed. Yes, I was shamed by the majority into going along so they wouldn't find out that my uncool parents voted for Nixon. Later on, I got tossed out of the class for, for um, when they had monitors, they had student monitors there, you know, when the teacher left. And then if you got three checks, you had to go to the principal. So I got three checks, had to go to the principal just for <clears throat> talking back to the monitors. I wouldn't, I wouldn't do what they said. Oh, they're, but they were both girls, by the way. And I, I argued back with them. And so I got the three checks, went to the principal. My parents had had it. They realized they, that they pulled me out of school. And, um, well, I did actually lift a, uh, you know, a... Uh, a desk chair over my head like I was going to throw it at somebody, but I didn't throw it, you know what I mean? But then they said I threatened them, you know, in a violent way, which I didn't do. And um, the next thing you know, I'm in private school, from public school to private school. Yeah, no, that was uh, kind of amazing. Um, well, you know, I... I, I I, I don't know really what to say, but I, I did the rest of my, my, my stint in, in private school where they filled my head with all kinds of nonsense. And, um, you know, the, the, the thing that I really loved was the scripto pen and my friend Todd, who would write the most beautiful cursive. We learned how to write cursively in like, I don't know, second or third grade. And then Todd would just develop this great, you know, style of penmanship 
And uh, so I always kept getting the Scripto pen, the same pen he had. But I could never make it make it so artistic as that. I could never make it look so good. And so there was a pen obsession going on, I remember, back then. And then I remember another time when I was in the fourth grade, I started a paper. Uh, I got a mimeograph, you know, where you, you have gelatin and you can run off copies. Do you remember those days? So I'd write up a paper and I'd start gossiping about people in the class I didn't like. <laughs> I started publishing my own paper. Yeah, I realized the power of publishing right there. I started publishing my own paper, and it got all it got everybody all into a. They couldn't wait to see what was going to be published, and then people got mad, and and it was uh, it was quite something. And then I was told to um, stand down. Right, they shut down the free press. Um, yeah. And then on the other bad things I used to do is I'd steal candy bars and stuff from the when sometimes when I'd ride my bike to school to the private school, which is down Beverly Boulevard. I'd have there was a five and dime store on the way back, and I'd stop there. And sometimes I got caught too shoplifting, you know, when I was like eight or something. And and uh, you know they had I didn't do it again after that, but I you know we got in a little habit of doing that after class. So that's pretty much it. Um, you know, anyway, as far as public shaming, yes, I did put my hand up with Kennedy because I was because it was over I didn't want to be the only one. And I was aware of this social pressure when I was in sick in first grade and six years old. So people kids know what's going on. That's a thing. And then when there was the, the whole, you know, satanic thing going on and rituals and whatnot. I mean, obviously, I knew that that was wrong, and obviously, you know, as I, as a six year old, I'm aware. So they had to put it away because I was so argumentative and so crazed about all that that they 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 hid it from me, figuring they'd get me again when I'm eight. You know, but then see what I mean, and um, so it all it all had to do, and it all has to do with like that Baphomet thing, you know, where you have the two kids looking up adorably at Baphomet, you know, at the Baphomet statue at Satan. And, um, you know, it's all about getting your hands on those children. You know, it's all about, you know, sexual abuse of children is what the symbol means. It's about having, you know, permission and access to the innocent, which the, the wicked prey upon to, to, to keep their power. And this is, a, this is just the nature of our world. You know, every single person in this world is aware of this and it knows it's wrong and is trying to make a go of it anyway. And I appreciate that. I just, uh, you know. So those of you who are on these blogs and, and, and YouTube comments, you know, just be aware that there are people out there that um, if you don't kowtow, like I don't kowtow to anyone. If you don't kowtow, they, they, they want to shame you publicly. Just like they want to shame, you know, do the whole Jews thing or the whatever. They do the Jew thing. And then they want to publicly shame people. And they want to go by this, you know, look, you see that hand sign there means penis and that means vagina. And then, you know, so I've done a little of that, but it, it's never been to browbeat someone. But they'll do that and say, see, those are Illuminati symbol, blah, blah, blah. You know, that's really a penis. That's really a vagina. That's really a, Right. And uh, so you got to be careful. I tried to make it humorous, talking about the Washington Monument and the reflecting pool, which is to contact the gods and the spirits, and then the um, the oval orifice, which symbolizes sex between the two over the water, which is contact. It's a whole Masonic symbolism thing that goes on. But I don't want to get too much into it because, again, it becomes a joke. People, you know, start, you know, it's, oh, you're seeing that everywhere, you know. And... Um, and it's all throughout our society, and and uh, you know you're onto it. You know you're onto it. Like Young Goodman Brown screaming and yelling, they're out in the woods. They're out in the woods. It turns out everybody but him is out in the woods. So it's tough. It's really tough. And I'm, this is going to be a short one here. I'm I'm not going to you know keep you. It's just that you know after dealing with this attempted public shaming. I'm I'm just a little bit shaken because you know why would I keep people around who are going to do stuff like that? They're just waiting for their moment to manifest.
right? They're waiting for their moment to shame you for because you're not putting down the Jews, to shame you because you're you're a crypto Jew Zionist, to shame you because you actually still have ties to Hollywood, rock and roll, whatever, you know, to shame you because you you like a certain kind. And like I said in the last audio, we went through all that buying the alternative Christian stuff and. You know, it's like, oh, hallelujah, we got rid of all the artwork. Which I'm sorry I did now. We got rid of every. we did everything the church told us to do. And it was all bull. All of it, bull. Everything about them was bull. Of course, I thoroughly reject the Christian church, a thousand percent, in every which way possible. I don't reject the Bible, I don't reject Jesus, I don't reject God, but I reject the church, evangelical, Catholic, all of it. I reject organized religion, totally. Though I've been a practicing Buddhist, not a practicing Hindu, I was never really into the Hare Krishna thing, but I mean, you know, I enjoyed going to the Hare Krishna events. Did it make an impact on me? No. Did it hurt me? No. I went to city yoga and I sat in, well, I guess I was a Hindu, I practiced Siddha Yoga. So I was practicing Siddha Yoga. Did it hurt me? No. Did I fit in? No, it didn't work out. Was I in any danger of my soul being taken? Uh, no. Not at all. Would I be in danger of something happening to me if I went to a rock concert? No. But what happens is you have discernment they don't, and so you start praying for them not to be possessed, and then, of course, that ruins the concert. <laughs> you understand the power of prayer, right? It's, 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 it's nuclear, in, right, in the hands of the right person, if you're hooked up. What, a good way to spot non-Christians, posers, is when they pray, nothing happens. Yeah, I have to be careful, because when I pray, things happen. I made some bad prayers about people in a, in a fit of anger, and I have to repent about that in Jesus' name, amen. Oh yeah, the tongue is a wicked instrument, oh boy. The tongue can really get you in trouble. And so that's something, you know, and, and, and yes, but am I shaming people for, well, sometimes I might get mad, but I mean, it's, 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 it's this, this, Shaming in Jesus' name thing is, I, when I became a Christian, I realized that all these rock stars are really sellouts and so did, so did Satan. So I'm not really interested anymore. I mean, you know, if you, you call uh, this Ginger Baker guy a genius and then he no genius, he's just a demon-possessed pagan. <laughs> That's literally what was told to me today for posting a documentary on Ginger Baker who uh, changed the course of drumming in terms of um, drums, and I'm a drummer, you know. I don't care whether he worships moon rocks. You know, he had an achievement that's worth noting, worth mentioning, and worth appreciating. And he's a mean, cantankerous old man. He throws stuff at people. I understand that. But far worse than him are these Christian hypocrites. Far worse. Far, far worse. Far more evil than he could ever be. Anyway, he isn't worshiping anything. He's an old man with infirmities, and he's... And he's disillusion with life and you know I feel sorry for him you know I mean because he had all that glory at that time and he didn't get paid for for the band that he created the the guy who wrote the lyrics and the guy that wrote the melody and they got paid and that and his big band was cream that was his band they got paid he didn't it's not fair it should have been uh, all split they should have put him on the melody and the and the uh and the um, and the lyrics too. I mean, you know, I suppose because he had final approval. You know, he should have at least been on with royalties as a producer. I'm uh, I'm horrified at the treatment. But he wound up, you know, not having everything going on and having a great life because of being a madman pagan. Anyway, he was a madman for sure. He was a drug addict, and that he says that helped his drumming, and then he got off of it. Yes, you know, yeah, he's guilty. He's guilty. He's a, he's a, he's a sinner. My God, he's a sinner. I don't know what to do with this problem of this, this Christian thing. I just realized today it's a lot bigger. I mean, 
I'm not dealing with the actual person. I don't know who the person is that made that statement or whatever. I'm dealing with a spirit that came into my consciousness that I've been dealing with that spirit over and over again from the very beginning. It's women. You know, it was Lisa Rubies at first and then the the Gabagoo. I don't even know what her name is. You know, the publishing things and hiring people to pray for our deaths and all kinds of nasty stuff. This is Jezebel territory. You're talking about Jezebel versus Elijah here. You know, the, the one with God versus one with the devil. You know, if I have any prayer at all, it's to expose these hypocrites that claim Jesus, claim to be born again Christians, to expose these people and put them out of business because they, they go directly against God's anointed, finding, you know, details that are wrong with them and then trying to shame them. I mean, they could be all over Brother Thomas right now for the fact that he, you know, liked uh, rock and roll. I like rock and roll too. I've done a couple of rock songs, you know, not that people who, you know, I have two audiences, podcast audience and a, and a small group of music audience, the music people know. But the a lot of the people that listen here, I know it's because you're distracted, but you're not really music lovers anymore. I am, I'm, I'm, I want to go back to doing a lot of listening and I'm right now researching uh, some... I definitely want to get back and well, the biggest mistake I made was when I went to the CD after and I got rid of the vinyl. I mean, how could I have done that? I mean, that's just, I just was ignorant. I didn't know. And then the CD was never as good as the vinyl, never. Oh, people make vinyl records now. It doesn't matter. You're going from there. It all depends on the quality of the conversion. They're going from digital to analog. I'm talking about analog to analog, baby. <laughs> no digital. Yeah, yeah. Well, I'll have you know that all the big records that you like, they're mastering on tape. That's right, analog. You can't fool Mother Nature. Now, why are they doing that? Because it gives them an edge in volume and headroom and punch and, and saturation. It gives them an, an edge. It just sounds not. You know what it is? Our... Our spirit recognizes the sound more. That's why I run everything that I master, everything that I do here, through analog gear, because there's a thing that just makes it more inviting, you know. But without the mafia behind you pushing your records out there, pushing your, you know, without being 20 years old and being, having been pushed by one of these, you know, uh, groups of people or corporations or whatever you want to call it, the corporate mafia, Without that, um, you know, you're going to have a small group of people that listen to you. You listen to them and, you know, hopefully it works out, you know. Um, what I tend to do is I'm gathering people that I know and I like to gather them on a, uh, in, a in a playlist and, and, you know, just get completely off the world's music and just listen to, to people that I know and, and applaud their progress or their whatever they do. But, um, you know, never, never mistake that it's, it's all about entertaining, you know, each other. So, you know, we're entertaining each other and there's a lot of people doing it and there's a lot of people that, that were around doing that. But make no mistake, we all know that we don't have the big machine behind us. We all know that we're, we're I'm forging ahead with a professional studio, for example, knowing full well that um, it's, it's, it's like a point of honor with me. It's a point of uh, fun as well to put it out there in a way that you couldn't produce it, even if I went to the studio. The amount of time that I take, it would cost me so much money that I wouldn't be able to put out even one track. But I'm putting them out all the time. And so that's, a, that's, a, that's, a, that's it's like, it's not a form of vengeance, but it is like a kind of like a game of chicken. You know, put it out there and then do what you want to do, but make it the same quality as what they can do. And I find that to be uh, delicious a delicious vengeance that hurts no one, but it's it's a nice vengeance. As far as celebrity goes, uh, of all the music, I'll keep Adele, but the rest of them you can just flush down the toilet. <laughs> I'd have to go back to uh, my jazz records to really find some uh, something to get excited about. Right now I'm on this thing with African drumming, so I'm on to the African drumming right now. And uh, thanks to Ginger Baker, because now I know the secret of his genius. And uh, 
he was very influenced by African drumming, and that's what he was trying to achieve. And so, besides other things, but I mean, I don't think people realize how unique he was, but when I have these little fucking children, I'm sorry, Bob did it again. <laughs> Who know nothing about anything. They know nothing about the Bible. They know nothing about anything, about any of this. Who have not suffered, not really. Who have no skin in the game, spouting off, you know, who who were who were not lying there in a coma, you know, at the hands of some other person, you know, or the, the, you know who 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 are not um, who claim to know all this stuff, but they they, they and also the other thing is ex Illuminati, you know, even though I've I've claimed it myself in a way, um, I I I don't I just want to say always red flag when someone's an ex Satanist. Of course, I'm no, I'm no Satanist, but always a red flag when there's an ex-Satanist who's now a Christian. I don't trust them as far as I can throw them, okay? I don't care who they are. I don't trust them. People say, well, John Todd. I say, I don't trust him as far as, I mean, I don't know where he is. He's dead or whatever, but I, I don't, I don't, I, I turn, I, I absolutely pay no attention to people like that. The, the biggest one was Bill Schnoblin guy, you know what I mean? I, I read his book, I threw it all the way across the room. It was so filled with error. I'm like, you were never a Satanist, you idiot. You know, but I mean, the people gobble it up. I'm not in that world, and I don't want to be in that world. And I don't want anything to do with these people. Ex-Satanist this or ex-Satanist. So I don't do a lot of interviews with people because I, I just, I'd rather talk to the man on the street. You know, um, so I have one f bomb in this, Frankie, and I'm so sorry. I I don't know where why my tongue is loosened. It's more. I guess what God's doing with me is having me not be a hypocrite, not talking one way at home, and then you know. What do you think, Trish? Am I a hypocrite? You're the best. Am I evil because of this horrible? No. Your skin looks lovely, by the way. Thank you. It's very noticeable. She's using a skin cream now. That now I want to use it. It's it's okay, so be vain now. Be vain. Be vain. There she is. Vanity will get you nowhere. Um so I and and then, you know, Frankie and then Rich Keltner, me and Frankie went through this whole public shaming thing, you know, up against these same people and then I dealt with it early on in two thousand four, two thousand five. And and I just I asked my friend who was friends with Lisa Ruby, I said, Why is she on a campaign to hurt me. What I don't see what I did to her or what, you know, I was just the Zeph report. You know, God told me to go out on the internet. I had no idea what was out there. Then I met the Christians online. Welcome to the NFL. All completely evil people, you know? And then I met the, uh, the talk show uh, whores, right? You know who they are. And then they're all evil. And like I don't want to call the whole world evil, and I'm, so I, you know, then I, then, then I, at least with the rock stars, I'm not getting the evil. I, I might be getting some honest confusion or people seeking the truth or whatever, but I'm not getting. You know, it's like you run into all these handlers and controllers in Christianity, that are there, at wolves in sheep's clothing, to handle people. Oh, they don't think they're wolves; they think they're lambs. You know. But that if it does, you know, the you can always use me as a litmus test. If something doesn't work out with me, oh, well, there's something wrong. That's right. At least that's what I do. I use myself as a litmus test. And the people I tend to get along with are not labeled as Christian. They're not, they don't necessarily know what to think or what to believe. And, and I don't impose my belief on them. But I, you know, we just did our kindred spirits. Like I say, I got one guy that, you know, I kind of like him, but he's he's on this uh, thing with the, you know, with the, I don't know, I can't even go into it. But it's it's, a, it's definitely an anti-God rant. And so maybe I'm, you know, then I say, well, maybe I'm evil. But then that couldn't be because obviously I'm not, you know, in their club with all the good people because they all look like angels of light out in, in public and on the airwaves and they all look like they're good people. 
So then, not to confuse you further, but so how does one get along in the world? I always go back to Psalm 23. You know, when it gets so confusing and so over the top and so ridiculous, I go to Psalm 23. You know, and um, the reason I go to Psalm 23 Oh, it's not, oh, my app is, is crashed. Oh, here we are. Okay. Oh, the app. Oh, it just crashed. We didn't like that. Oh, my goodness. Okay, let's just go to the psalm. This thing has its own mind. 23. I think you're going to hear some new new things in here you didn't hear before. It's a short psalm. It's only six verses. But anyway, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. Numero uno. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside still waters. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Amen. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me, and thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the, in the presence of mine enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil, and my cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. And that's a beautiful psalm. Now, I always go to this, thou preparest a table before me in the presence of my enemies. The Lord prepares a table for me, a pathway through the world. There's good guys, bad guys, and, and if they're labeled, whatever religion they label, whatever club they say, it's what, what somebody does, not what they do. And you can feel the vibe off a person, you know, what kind of person they are, whether they're going to betray you or not, whether they're being honest with you. And it's a mixed bag out there. That's the best I can put it. And it's, it's dangerous out there. You need someone's protection. I choose the Lord, not human beings to have my back. I'd rather have the Lord have my back because the Lord puts human beings in my path that, will, that help me and I help them. So that's what I'm wanting. That's the way I get through it. That's the way I go out there without fear. And I do very well. You know, when I'm out there amongst them, I do very well. It's not like I'm, I'm Pollyanna. It's not like, you know, they don't know who you are and you don't know who they are. We know. But there's a mutual respect because there are two forces here. It's when you're scared and when you're frightened that, you know, they attack, right? When you're strong in the Lord and confident, they do not attack because they know what's in you is stronger than what's in them. They know that and they stand down just like dogs do. They know you're the alpha dog because you've got the Lord. The Lord is alpha. They are beta. They are not alpha. As long as you understand that, you can go anywhere you want. Do whatever you want. You have total freedom. But without understanding and having that confidence, which is called faith, by the way, without that faith, you can do nothing. Without the Lord on your side, you can do nothing. Okay, here's my, I, I promised you before, I had these old, I had this old book. It's all yellow pages now on uh, God's promises. Do you need it, Do you need I, I need light. <laughs> you know, um, let's see what I've turned to here. I'm just going to turn to one. You're going to love this. Believer's prayers and promises. It just takes the scriptures and organizes them. But this is a great way to do it. Well, where's the one about, uh, this is not the one I want. Is that the right book? No? Uh, there was one that, um, you know, all right, here's one for peace. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and minds through Jesus Christ. Okay. This one? Uh, no, let's try that one. Another old book. Oh, this is it, <clears throat> Trish. Yes. 
This one goes on editorializing, and I don't need somebody else's commentary. I like this one, because it's, it's like, okay, the topic is healing, okay, folks? I know a lot of you need healing, so let me just read some of these. And now I have the verses organized, okay? Numero uno, from Exodus 1526, I am the Lord that healeth thee. Psalm 103, uh, two and three. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits, who forgiveth all thine iniquities, and who healeth all thy diseases. Isaiah 5, uh, 3 through 5. He was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. Uh, the, chaste, the chastisement of our peace was upon him, and with his stripes we are healed. Heal me, O Lord, and I shall be healed. Save me, and I shall be saved. For thou art my praise, Jeremiah seventeen fourteen. But unto you that fear my name shall the Son of Righteousness arise with healing in his wings, Malachi 4, 2. And he receiveth them and spake unto them of the kingdom of God and healed them that had need of healing. Luke 9, 9 11. And Jesus went about all Galilee, teaching in the synagogues and preaching the gospel of the kingdom and healing all matter of sickness and all matter of disease among the people. Matthew 4, 2 through 3. Confess your faults to one another. <laughs> Have I done that enough to you? And pray <laughs> for one another. I hope you're praying for me. That ye be healed. Those are faults, are uh, 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 a symptom of, of a sickness, of a malady. The effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. James five sixteen. Who his own, who his own self, bear our sins, in our own body on the tree, that we being dead to sins should live unto righteousness, by whose stripes we were healed. One Peter, two uh, two. One Peter two, and that's two through four. Who his own self bear our sins in his own body on the tree that we being dead to sins should live unto righteousness by whose stripes you were healed. And this is spiritual healing. Okay? The, the reason I like that, it's called Bible Promises. It has a, I don't know, a picture of a gal sitting there on a park bench. And I'm pretty sure it's still in print. It's um, by Whitaker. And... There's no editorializing, um, you know. Basically, it's just just the scriptures, please, organized in the topics of healing, protection, and various things. And I used to keep, I'll keep this handy now for uh, future <clears throat> pods because I know these scriptures, but, you know, you miss some, like the Malachi one. I haven't been to that in a long time. So, you know, this way you get a lot of concentration of, I mean, those are beautiful, aren't they? These are God's promises. This is what the Lord has promised in his word. You know, and, and oh, I can see them shaming me now. Well, you like some of the word, but not all of it. I mean, look, you cuss on the air. You should never publish it. Well, the Lord wants me to publish it because he doesn't want me to be a hypocrite, because he doesn't want me to be prideful, because he wants me to show that I am too a sinner and I'm prone to sinning and I'm no good, you know, and <clears throat> I'm certainly no better than, than people that, that uh, friends I have that don't know what's going on in terms of the spiritual warfare and stuff. And they're kind of, you know, they're being protected in some way. I can see that, but we're kindred spirits because we're both of the same spirit. So I, I see that they, um, they wake up when God wants them to, you know, they, everyone does think, you know, this thing about being ahead or behind, I, <clears throat> I pulled it. I said, well, there's someone who says they're bored again for, for you know, two days versus someone who's been walking and, and putting, you know, paying dues. Um, <clears throat> well, what I mean by that is someone who's faking it. 
you know, finding a way to say, okay, I'm a Christian and now I get to go shame, find fault with all these people and go shame them all. <clears throat> I know people that made a whole life out of that, but you know what happened to them? Well, little faith that they did have that God gave them from grace, they lost it. Others went back into the churches where they become, you know, browbeating, you know, uh, uh, sycophantic, um, you know, bureaucrats, you know, just just bugging people and getting into their homes and getting their hands on the children. And then, of course, they're perverts, too, you know, which has been my experience is that I just ran into, no, not just sinners. I mean, people that want to take the souls of people, you know, you know win souls for the devil and then call it Jesus. Bait and switch, you know, yeah, been there, seen it, uh, don't appreciate it. Can't believe God allowed it to go on so long, but then look what he's doing to this country. <laughs> I think the real issue here is not so much worrying about the rock stars and the Satanists and the and the sort of Illuminati, Jay-Z and the rest of it. I think that's not even, that's not, that doesn't even scratch the surface of our problems here. Our problems here is we don't have a functioning body of Christ. It's Christ has been decimated. You know, the war has been successful. Now, everyone here is a refugee. You know, if you want to go with the Lord, then you got to kind of do it, you know. I mean, go ahead and go with the Lord then, you know. And uh, just just dedicate yourself to the Lord. Inquire of the Lord, you know. Read the scriptures. Get in, Get involved in the hopes that he will bring you in. Okay, he's a person. He's no respecter of persons, but I mean, I begged. I was at the end of my rope, and I realized that was the time of my, that was the appointed time for my being called there and when I was in my 40s, you know. That was when I was called. I, I bounced around the world and, you know, had a, like, not a very good experience. But, you know, the Lord allowed it because, I mean, after being kicked in the teeth a million times and, you know, left for dead and set up and all the rest of it, um, it's like I had proved myself to the Lord. You know what I mean? I had stayed the course anyway, even though I wasn't with the Lord. I was doing it on my own. But I had, I had pleased him in some way because of how I fought. I fought back. He liked that. He doesn't like Someone that just gives up. Oh, well, it's too big. Oh, gee, I know. He likes the Don Quixote in me. He loves it. It's not something that, that I do as a virtue, by the way, folks. No. It's something that was just like a gift. He likes me questing after the impossible quest. He likes me um, speaking the truth to power to the whole thing. He likes me unmasking all the hypocrites in the churches and the established people that are beyond reproach out there. You know, even even these uh, stringers from the evangelical church posing as independents online so you'll buy their books and stuff. Uh, he sees that. A lot of people that I like can't have me around because I just wreck it. The whole thing. He loves that about me. But... It's not something I do on purpose. It kind of just happens. It's not like somebody saying it's the Jews or it's, you know, don't publish something about a, uh, you know. It's like the same people that came around telling me to get rid of artwork. I had, I had masks and I had different things from different cultures, you know, ethnic things. And they tell me they're all evil, you know. Um, turned out, you know, it's not what's evil. It's what's in us that's evil, Right. I don't find the Tibetan mandala particularly evil that is made with sand. It takes about a year to do it, then they blow it away. No, I don't find that inherently evil. I understand they have all kinds of gods and this and that, reincarnation, and, you know, I know the Vajrayana vehicle. I understand that, you know, the lightning bolt vessel. I understand that, meditating on the bones. I understand that, Tibetan Book of the Dead. I understand that. So what? It never hurt me to study that stuff. I was enriched by it. Thank you. Ignorance is never... Um, 
the big the big charge against the Christian church is that the Christians are a bunch of ignorant racists that react stupidly to everything. You know what I mean? And the charge, as far as the American church, is absolutely true. You know, um, you know, I won't say racist, but I mean that's you know the the right wing Christian patriot. Uh, gun-toting, whatever. They had a reputation of being uh, bigots. And I will say that, well, it may not be true today like it was then because the churches have broken down. You don't have, you don't have uh, militias and patriots coming out of the evangelical church today. So, you know, now it's just white people are bigots, you know, the white people are the problem, kill them all, you know, which is the, uh, the, the policy of uh, the president and the social changers and the, you know, the uh, bureaucracy and whatever. They've kind of tried to slant it all toward, you know, and then, of course, they want to, I, you know, they, they want to eradicate um, white people. And I don't care if they eradicate white people or have blue people or I don't care what they do. You know, to me, this whole planet is a problem. You know what I mean? What I want is deliverance out of it. I don't really, I can't really relate to it anymore. I used to, you know, want to win the game and all that. But I, you know, at this point I've seen so much that I can't take back. You know, I can't go into Disneyland anymore. I I can't just have a nice delusion to kind of sit with. Even a momentary appreciation of a drummer, apparently that's illegal. You know, I just don't even want any part of it. They'll shame you for doing this. They'll shame you for doing that. They'll shame you no matter what you do. They'll shame you and 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 and never stop. You can flog yourself and whip yourself. You'll never be good enough. They're going to have to just burn you at the stake because you're just made wrong. And that's the thing that I've been fighting against. I haven't been fighting the, the Satanists out there somewhere. I don't have an axe to grind with people that do uh, witchcraft rituals, which is what it is, literally, witchcraft rituals that involve, if you're talking about, you know, everything from orgies, blood sacrifice, potions, animal sacrifice, whatever, anything like that, it's all witchcraft, okay? I don't, I don't hold it against them. It's the way of the world, right? And it's in our culture, it's just buried more. But it's the same thing that exists everywhere, right? But I'm tired of it. You know, I'm tired of watching it. I don't want to see it. I, I don't, you know, I'm t- it's what do you say? Well, Jay-Z and the Illuminati Hollywood, that's not the real problem, but I'm tired of looking at that too. It's boring to me. It's boring. I'm thinking right now about what I'm going to do to p- pull this musical piece out of uh, limbo. And I want it, you know, I'm thinking right now about this this toy that I've got. And I'm thinking of how I can make it into something today. You know, how I can say something, you know, because you say something poetically, it's stronger than 10 of these podcasts. I mean, maybe not for you, but I mean, for, for those out there, you know, that want to hear it that way, more concentrated. Well, ultimately, it's about breaking your consciousness away from this thing that's gobbling you up, isn't it? And being free, right? Otherwise, we're all we're all being chipped in the wood chipper, aren't we? Oh, just let it happen, man. Just let it go. <laughs> just take it easy, man. <laughs> right. Right? Isn't that, isn't that the message they give you? Or we'll f- freaking kill you. <laughs> isn't that it? Why make it hard on yourself, man? I mean, come on. It's just all a big party of joy. <laughs> isn't that it? In, in, in other words, salvation for stupid people, right? Salvation for morons. Yes? I, right? You see through it. Yeah, but I had to. No, no, no. You're, you're troubled. You're troubled. I can see it. You're troubled. It didn't quite work out, did it? No. Look at the what happens to people. 
<clears throat> no, we need something. I mean, I know God is veiled from this world. He is veiled. Like the occult is veiled, God is veiled. Both are veiled. And that's the most interesting point about this podcast. Both are veiled. Both are hidden in mystery. But rather, shrouded in mystery. Both are not really completely accessible by a normal normal mind, meaning a, a, a typically carnal, materialistic, brainwashed mind. Yes? Who believes the Disneyland thing is real, right? You can't access the occult or God either way if that's your mentality. You're just kind of like, you know, going along to get along, sort of like just floating down the stream. Yes? Atrophying all the way. That's our sad humanity. That's everybody. That's what happens. And then, you know, to go with God would be to swim against the grain, against the strain, to put up with public ridicule, shame, and, and humiliation, and outright attack. Anyone that seeks to be different from the norm would get that attack. I don't care whether you say, the, you know, uh, what it is in science, like global warming thing, you know, whatever. Uh, not just the Jesus things, anybody who stands up for any kind of truth is actually being godly in that moment. See, and they're getting attacked for it, for sure. But I happen to believe that God cares about us all. I know this. And I know people caught up in the most awful evil. I know I could have been caught up in it too. I know that. I could have done those things. It just, it didn't work out that way. But, I'd, if it was reversed, sure, it could be reversed. Could I be um, Obama in the White House? And I could, I'd be much worse than Obama in terms of executive orders. I, I'd already have a dictatorship, totalitarian state. Anyone who disagreed with me, I'd arrest him and put him in a FEMA camp. I mean, yes, I could see doing that, sure. Would you forgive me? No, you wouldn't. Well, God has a little... Then, that right there is the source of your failure with God. He's not going to let up on us, folks. He's, it's going to be hard. It's going to be hard. There's no definitive statement I could act, uh, say that's across the board, one brush for everybody. All I can tell you is this. It doesn't matter what your perspective is or where you're coming from and what your background is. You're going to have these challenges in life, okay? And it's going to come at you from all sides at times. And, and it's always supernatural because it's just like coincidences that, that couldn't possibly, you know what I mean? And so we're, we're, we're running a race here. Now, the key to running that race is going to be faith, okay? It's going to be faith in God and faith in, in now with me it's faith in Jesus now I dance with the one who brung me meaning that you know it was God Jesus the word of God the Bible etc that, that lifted me up I was the rejecter of you know I would go everywhere but the Bible I was you know like I say in Hinduism in you know from through city yoga to uh, various forms of Buddhism, from 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 the uh, Tibetan Buddhism, um, Taoism too, and um, never really a fan of the New Age, you know, of the triangles and the you know the triangle signs and all that. I didn't like those. I wasn't really a fan. Not a fan of Manly P. Hall. Not a fan of Western theology or Western Freemasonry or any of it. When I say East, I mean East, all the way over there, you know, the guy in the ashram, you know, that's, that's what I mean. I don't mean here. I don't mean syncretism, which is the blending of East and West. Syncretism, the blending of the old religious tradition with the new one coming in, as would happen in, when, uh, when Buddhism swept through China. They called it Chan. And um, it would just simply replace the old pagan gods that, that they would burn spirit money to and all that and sacrifice to. And now they're bodhisattvas. <laughs> you know, that's called syncretism. That's a technical uh, historic uh, term, and it's a technical term in a technical 
field of the history of religions, which is a field used to be also be called comparative religions, but the chair at uh, the chair at <clears throat> the University of Chicago, which is a big hub of this, is um, uses the word syncretism to describe the blending of religions in a village, let's say, where it was one thing and then a new a new movement comes in, a new wave comes in, a, a, the, the new law of the land comes in. And so it changes, but they never really get rid of the old gods. It's a phenomenon that one can make an entire lifetime study of. It's fascinating. So I, the whole study of the history of religions has just taught me to back off all of them. When I say Jesus, I also mean truth. I also mean way, meaning, meaning a pathway. No, I do not advocate taking the open road, the wide path. If I happen to quote people or put videos up of people who have taken the wide path, it's because there's something about their lives that's significant to me and I don't consider any life over until it's over. So to me, everybody, everything is fair game. If I see art that I like, and the, they say, well, that's from a seething Satanist, but I don't feel that satanic vibe in the artwork, then I'm going to look at it. I'll make up my own mind, thank you very much. I don't need someone to tell me, or worse, shame me for having looked at it. I mean, am I making myself clear? Well, this has to be cleared out before 2016. I mean, this is, this is what ruins... Um, every every walk because nobody likes the yoke of slavery and when people come around doing that they're trying to enslave you right and box you into their little box of reality and if you step outside the box they're there to shame you again until you behave this is ridiculous this is demonic and this is taking what was meant to be an open door for you to be free and closing it and having these shills tell you what to think and not think. You know, I say think for yourselves. When you encounter scriptures, you don't need me to interpret them for you. You interpret them. Well, the person I dealt with online, you know, one of, unfortunately, millions, you know, of people like that. Um, they're going to run into a very uh, big problem in their lives called no faith. They're going to realize they never had faith and, and you know, that they're going to have a breakdown. But that's going to be a good thing because that's the only way they're going to really be able to understand. When you're so broken down, you just can't even breathe. You know, at that point, then, you know, it's like, Lord, you're not even to the point of browbeating or shaming anyway. You're just like, I can't, I just... I'm just going to give out from the fact that I'm just so lost. I'm so far gone. My heart's just going to stop beating. I'm just going to go away. I just can't even imagine facing another day. I've so messed everything up. See, that's where we end up, a lot of us. And then that's where, if you give your life to the Lord, then, you know, and God answers you, then I guess you know who God is. Blessed are the pure in heart, for you shall see God. In your brokenness, you become purified once again. I mean, you didn't do it by fasting. You did it by getting, by getting body slammed. But either way, you're seeing God. <clears throat> you're a pure heart. And let's see a little fight left in you. God loves it when you've got a little fight in you. God wants to see a little fight not just these passive automaton robots that you see claiming Jesus and going around criticizing everything, you know. That's what really gave Christianity such a bad reputation to where even most recently, in 2015, they made a movie called, I think, Mark for Dean or something. Um, I, I don't know. that It was like the guy's name who was a biblical archaeologist. And they just slammed Christianity and the whole the whole 
biblical archaeology thing and the TV evangelist. They they just they nailed it, and they were accurate, and it was well deserved. But I mean, obviously, this problem's raging on because they wouldn't make a movie in 2015 unless the subject matter had relevance. Starring Sam Rockwell, who did a fantastic job. Look, you're touting Satanists as being fantastic. I don't know that he's a Satan. Did he say that? Whether people are Satanists or not, it's kind of murky because, you know, they could be Satanic. But then it kind of, you know, it's a mixed bag. It kind of goes back and forth within us. It changes all the time, too. You think you're evil. You think you're, you know... There are hardcore Satanists who are just, I guess, devout worshipers of Satan, literally. You know, but that's more rare. You know, most people are kind of in the middle going back and forth and bouncing off the walls, and they're just they're just doing what works and trying to say it's not spiritual. You know, I know what they're doing. They're trying to somehow slide under the radar and have a decent life, and they don't want any trouble with anything, and they, they're just trying to have the, the eke out their lives and have their families and not make a fuss. And I understand that. But folks, you know, the reason we've been getting more popular is because you know and I know that those days are over of sliding by, right? We're being called to a decision here. The time for sliding by, ladies and gentlemen, has passed. The time for being called to account is Nigh. Oh, then you have, I know, you have the, quote, left-wing Christian, you know, kind of communist thing. Um, well, are they out there shaming people? You bet they are. <laughs> I just asked my daughter, please don't shame me for not being a vegan. I've, I've tried that. It was like committing suicide. Um, you know, I've got a, you know, I like to try to get fish from Alaska that's just caught that day and frozen, you know, so I've captured it. They say the enzymes aren't there, but I think they are. I can feel it, you know. And um, and then, of course, if you if you have something that's never been frozen that was killed, and you know, so you eat what you can kill. And um, But my daughter thinks like, I mean, she can't help but think that, you know, obviously I'm deluded, a murderer. Well, we don't share. I said, I told her my medical um, thing and I said, hey, this uh, ketogenic diet plus PEO, you know, the right oils and minerals and stuff. But I mean, it's been like, you know, well, you've seen my output. You've seen my, right? You've seen, uh, unbelievable. Most people slowing down. The Z-Man's just getting cranked up. In the end, those of you who want to commit suicide, if what Zeph says is true, in the end, I am right and you are wrong. And, and that's just the way it's going to be. And you will be, you know, more put into the knowledge of how wrong you are as time goes on until you finally say, like a lot of people say, oh, my God, what have I done? I'm right when I say that the Lord is all there is. That's the only way out of this mess. You know, and, and you're wrong to think that you can find your own way uh, through something that, that is so far beyond your pay grade in terms of your intelligence that there's no way you can find your way out of anything. You couldn't find your way out with two hands. Uh, you know, uh, I won't say, I'm not going to be gross, but no, you can't do it on your own. No. If it were that easy, we would have world peace right now. Most people, you talk to people, they all want peace, but but then why are we all dying? You know, what, what, what gives here? The people at the very top will change the slowest. The people, you know, in the middle, faster, and at the bottom, quick. You know, if they have less to lose, right? With me, I can't explain, I had... I had things, I had I had money, I, I don't know what happened. I just, it didn't matter. I still just thought I should be dead. So I suppose that's hitting bottom, meaning I had no more moves. It's, I just felt that I couldn't go on another day with the onslaught of the satanic, demonic realm 
was so strong and had caught so many people up that there was no one I could even turn to for a word of advice or just just a, a word of fellowship. It, it was barred from the churches. It was barred from, from polite society. It was barred from the cafe. Where does one go to just get a decent, honest conversation with another human being? And a handshake means trust. Where, where can we go for that sort of thing? Used to be America. Oh, I believe I believe it was like that. Yeah. Perhaps not in our lifetime. No. Looks like the devil's been very successful in getting most everybody on his side. And no, uh, I'm sorry. Guess who? It's not the new Mother Nature taking over. It's Satan taking over. Thank you. Just want to make that clear. Well, just in case someone thought they could slide by with those lyrics. Uh, no, I'm sorry. Uh, Burton Cummings Jr., um, you didn't slide by on that one. Okay, just, no, I'm not, you know, it's no criticism. I'm, 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 I dig the Guess Who. I listen to that song occasionally. I always marvel at uh, Burton Cummings' voice. What a what a great voice! What a great band! And uh, Canada at its best. But hey, you know that. But certain things just kind of, you know, it's just if it quacks, you know. And, and so I, I. But but I'm not going to shame you for it. You know what I mean? You want to listen to that, and you know, and it's it's cool. I was mad at people who would wouldn't play our music, but they would play like, you know, the typical stuff you're supposed to like because you were told to like it, right? Nothing happens by accident with these pop stars, you understand, and rock stars. Nothing happened. Everything that happens to them is money has been put into it, planning. They know that you're going to accept whoever they put in front of you because they know the levers to push to make you accept. Understood? I saw a fantastic movie recently, and don't let me get by without saying that. It's called Life. It was about a photographer from Life magazine who was following uh, a young James Dean around. Of course, he, he was young. He died at 24 years old, so he was always young. But following James Dean around, be pre-fame of, of East of Eden and, and uh, Rebel Without a Cause, these are two movies that were big influences on my life. You know, they're big in, you know, they were big on my parents' lives. You know, they were big... You know, 1954, 1955, 56, respectively. And um, he died at 24, a very tragic, mysterious, you know, crash in his Porsche. And people are th sometimes you know, intimating that, well, the studio did him in the corporate mafia because he was rebelling. He wouldn't do what they wanted him to do. He wouldn't show up at the premiere, for example, of East of Eden. He didn't even bother, you know, and he was supposed to. And so he pissed everybody off so much he wound up dead. I mean, that, but it was an accident. Anyway, it's another suspicious thing. Yeah, just like the rock stars. They, they want you because they wanted him because he couldn't be controlled. Anyway, I thought the actor that played James Dean did a terrific job of creating, maybe not the same as James Dean, but a very enigmatic character who had this raw talent but couldn't be controlled, and the photographer who captured it. And, you know, it was a little tiny film, you know what I mean, just a character piece. But I thought it was really, you know, because you're dealing with big icons and big history. But I thought it was, you know, it was the first time I thought about James Dean being uh, the, the victim of a hit rather than an accident. So maybe the movie was aiming it that way a little bit, you know. It's funny, I knew the grandson of Jack Warner we went to school together. And they had Jack Warner in here telling, threatening James Dean that he was going to, you know, what he was going to do to him if he didn't obey, you know. So it's like, yeah, they'll let you have all this wealth. They'll let you have a big house in, you know, Bel Air a yacht down in Marina del Rey. But the thing is, you can have all that, but there are rules you got to follow. And if you're stupid, you don't follow the rules, and bad things happen, like people wind up dead. Uh, enter in one Marilyn Monroe, case in point. Uh, suicided is what happened to her. 
Yeah, she she was owned and operated by 20th Century Fox. Yep. Well, I say that because I knew the doctor that was in charge of her. Well, he's long dead now, but I just find that very interesting. That I had met him, and, you know, I, I always felt that he was a man who had so much blood on his hands, you know, just who was so troubled as a soul, but was a good guy underneath, you know what I mean? You could see that with this guy. He was the... That he was the main medical doctor for 20th. Anyway, you could see he was a good guy. And he was a kind soul, you know, but very troubled at the things that probably he had to do to have such a position like that because the stars were there to be controlled. But, you know, what works on the screen is usually an enigmatic person who is just not controllable. There's some like an isotope that's unstable, you know? And uh, and so many, much tragedy trying to control that thing because you're running a business. And yet, you know, the people that really want to be there that show up on time and at work and are, are cogent and, 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 you know, literally reliable, these are not the people that translate to the screen in, in the main, you know? They're looking for that enigmatic one that they just can't quite control who might wind up dead like James Dean, who just might wind up dead like some of these rock stars. You know, that's what they that's what the world wants. And yet the very nature of these people is uncapturable, elusive, and enigmatic. And I find this conundrum to be fascinating. Again, it's not something I'm gonna spend time on, but I'm always fascinated, you know, by that sort of thing. You know, um, it, it's it's the person that would say rebel without a cause, but the rebel is doesn't know he's a rebel, isn't conscious of who he is. He just is that way. And, um, you know, you, you, you Hollywood... You know, we as humanity, since they are the presenters of of the best of humanity to us, uh, searching for that, for that elusive one, to be a new messiah, to be a cultural icon, you know, like a Barlett Brando or something, to be that individual, that that enigmatic one. But it's some you're born that way. You're not, you know, acting school can't do it. You know, music school can't do it. Rock star training can I, I knew people that actually trained to be rock stars. They actually went to school to learn how to uh, present themselves on stage better. And I'm like, well, you've got to be kidding me. You either have it or you don't. It's a, it's a God-given gift. It's just like drumming. God gave me the gift, and it's like, you know, I, it's no big deal for me. I can, you know, I just, I, I don't really show off with it, you know. But and music in general, you know, it's, it's you either have it or you don't. You know, you can learn all the chords and learn all the stuff and learn all the rudiments and learn all the riffs, and still just not really have a clue what's really going on. But we all want that. It's that lightning in a bottle, that special gifted, talented one. We want to. We we need to see that, and the presenters are trying to find those people to present them to you and make money off them, but they don't fit into a night knees box. A lot of times, tragic things happen to them. Then there are the pretenders. You know, the pretenders are the ones that, uh, you know, oftentimes they will, uh, they'll present them to you as one of those people. I think a good case in point might be um, Lady Gaga, for example. Now, to me, I, you know, it's uh, there's an awful lot of work that goes into making her look different and flamboyant and over the top and, and whatever. But this is not the kind of person I'm talking about. That thing that we're craving, that's not it. They're putting that, like, down our throat 
you know, presenting it like she is one of those people, but she isn't. She's good, you know. She's good songwriter, very talented, you know, not, great voice, and she's an actress now, so she's you know obviously talented in acting. But is this is not what I'm talking about? Uh, perhaps Amy Winehouse would have been what I'm talking about, right? Or you know, I hate to talk just about dead people, but I mean, there's a certain thing. And if they can't find it, they'll try to make it like a Lady Gaga. They'll try to produce it. Um, in many ways, Madonna's like in the same category as Lady Gaga. You know, she's you know got all kinds of talent, and, you know, definitely in the groove and all the stuff. And but it, it, she's not what I mean. It's close, but no cigar. The world combs the world, but mean they'll take it because it's good commercial product, right? But it's that special one they're looking for. Both of these women don't don't are not it. It's just, it's not any kind of thing you can earn. You're born with it, and then we tend as humanity to lift it up as an example to us all, and then we kill it. We kill it. Something happens. They wind up dead. It's the strangest phenomenon. Again, you can spend a lifetime on that if you like. I'm trying to find the, the spiritual answer. I just know that it's that spark, that thing, that enigmatic thing, thing you cannot make. I don't care. You can't go to school for it. You can't. You, there's nothing you can do to learn. You just, it's just that special one, and we want those special ones. And in a sense, you know, in an entertainment business, we feed off them, and then we kill them. And then they go try to find another icon like that. And then when they're dead, the people go on with their candlelight vigils and everything as if they're still alive, worshiping them like they're some kind of presence or God that's with them right now. And it's the saddest thing because the very people that are lauding them now after they're dead, right, or the ones who killed them in the first place in a symbolic way. You know, I don't mean literally, but you know what I mean. I think if you look back through the world, you'd find there are many more examples of that sort of thing. And yes, a lot of these people that are enigmas, perhaps they belong more to God. And then, you know, Satan is trying to stuff them in a box that could, could benefit him but they can't be stuffed into a box like these other people. Like, you can rely on this Lady Gaga, you can rely on Madonna, you can rely on, you know, Justin Timberlake, you can rely, right? But they don't have it. You know, they, well, they have gifted, but they don't have it. <clears throat> Justin whatever, Bieber, the Justins. But they don't have it. If they do have it, their lives are in danger. I'll just leave you with that thought. Anyway, addendum to the first one. I'm I'm glad. Uh, I'm I'm trying. Um, I'm you know I'm sorry about the f bombs. I'm I'm going to work harder on that. And uh, uh, God bless. God bless. I'm sorry I'm not turning this thing off properly. God bless you.